Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to recreate a trendy hero section for your next e commerce Divi project. This is the final design that we're aiming to design in today's tutorial. So, without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so there are a few things we're going to need in order for us to complete our project. So, we're going to need some product images. So, the first one is going to be 1600 uh, pixels high by 1187 width. The other image is going to be 1600 width and 1200 high. We're also going to need a, an image, a PNG, a PNG image that we're going to use, but uh, you'll have to download this on the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. Okay, so I'm logged into my WordPress admin dashboard. So the first thing we're going to do is to disable the fixed navigation. So to do that, we're going to come over here to Divi, theme options. And then we're going to come over here to fixed navigation bar. Right now it's, it's enabled, so we just need to disable that. Next, we're going to go into our primary menu bar and make some changes there. So for now, I'm just going to click on save changes. And then I'm going to come over here to theme customizer. Okay, so we're going to come over here to header navigation, primary menu bar. So the first thing is we're going to make this full width. We're going to set the menu height to 66 and the logo max height to 54. And over here on the text size, we need to set it to 24. And then over here on the letter spacing, we're going to set this to minus one. And then over here for the font, we're just going to set this to default. Right, so moving on to the font style, we're just going to make sure that this is not set to bold. And then we're going to make it all caps and underline. Now let's set the text color. So I'm going to set my first text color in here. I'm going to paste my hexadecimal value. Now, if you want to use the exact uh, same uh, information here, I will link to the post in the show notes below so you can use the exact uh, same colors. Okay, so next we're going to come over here to active link color. Again, we're going to paste our hexadecimal value in here. Next, we're going to come over here to our background color. So because this color is going to be transparent, I'm just going to drag all this all the way down to full transparency. We're also going to do the same for the drop down uh, background color. Drag the slider all the way down like that. Okay, so now that we have all this set, next we, need, we just need to go ahead and click on publish. And then we're going to exit out of this and create our new page. So uh, to create our page, we're just going to come over here to pages, click on add new. Uh, let's call this uh, stylish hero. Now, of course, you can use any name for your page. So next, I'm going to click on Use the Divi Builder, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Use Visual Builder. So the first thing we're going to do here is to add a background color to our section. So I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on background, and then I'm going to add my background color. So I'm just going to paste my color in here like that. Next, I'm going to go to spacing. So I'm going to click on design, and then I'm just going to search for spacing. And then what we're going to do here is we are going to add a padding of zero to the top and zero to the bottom. Okay, so next we need to go to visibility. So I'm just searching for it here. So what we can do here is this section that we're going to design is only for the desktop. So we need to make sure that we disable phone and tablet. So that means this section will not be shown on a phone or a tablet. It's just for the desktop. So what we're going to do next is to add our columns. So I'm going to save this for now. Come over here, click this plus button. So we're going to add two equal columns like that. And then next, we're going to come over here to our row settings. Now we need to make this row full width. So we're going to come over here to design, sizing, and then we're going to click on make this row full width. Next, we're going to come over here to the spacing. And we need to add some padding. So first of all, we're going to start off with the top. So for the top, we're going to add zero pixels, zero to the right, and then 135 to the bottom. And then over here to the left, we're just going to add zero. So all this will make sense once we start adding all our content in. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. And then I'm going to come over here to our first column and add our first text module. So I'm going to search for it and then select it. Right, so I'm going to add my text in here. So this is just going to be called creative. So we are going to have two different uh, text modules so that we can add different styling to it. Okay, so now that we have our text in here, let's go ahead to the design tab. And then I'm going to come over here to text. So let's start off with the font. So our font is going to be called Adamina. Select it. Right, so for the font weight, we're going to set this to bold. 
and then over here for our text font style we're going to underline it and then we're going to add the underline color so i'm going to paste the hexadecimal value in here so making sure that the text underline style is set to solid let's move on to the text size so i'm going to increase this until i get to about 73 so we, not, we, we want this nice and bold. Next, we're going to add our text color. I'm going to paste it in here. And then I'm going to come over here to my text line height and set this to 1EM. And then finally, we want to set our text orientation to centered. So the one thing I forgot to do is to make sure that our text font style is also set here to all caps like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. Now, because we're going to have our second uh, text using the same text module or a similar, uh, similar design, I'm just going to duplicate this like that. And then I'm going to rename this to Vibes, like that. So right now, we can see that the space between the primary menu bar and our section is quite close. So what we need to do is to go back into our text module here. And then we're going to add some margin. So I'm going to come over here to Design, Spacing. And then we're going to add a margin of 120 pixels to the top. So this should be enough for us to have enough breathing space here. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. So we're just going to make a few changes to uh, this second text module. So I'm going to come over here to my module settings, click on design, text. So what we need to do here is to change our text underline color. I'm going to paste my color in here like that. We're also going to come over here to our text color. And I'm going to paste my color in here, like that. Okay, so that looks good. Everything else seems fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and save. Now for the first column, we need to add an image module. So let's go ahead and do that. So right now, because of the way my modules are, I, I don't have enough space to add my image module. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch on over to my wireframe view. And then I'm going to add it from here. So I'm just going to search for my module, select it. So the image we're going to need here is the PNG file, which, you'll, which you can download from the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So because I have mine on, on my media library, all I have to do is to click on upload. And then I'm just going to choose it from my media library. And then I'm going to go ahead and click on upload an image. And then next, I'm going to go back to my desktop view so I can see what is happening here in my design. So what we're going to do next is we're going to give this triangle, I know you can't see it right now, but we're going to give that triangle a background gradient. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to come over here to background and then click the second tab. Then I'm going to click this plus button. So you can see here straight away when I click this gradient, um, this triangle is now visible. That's because it is a PNG file. So let's go ahead and add our colors. So our first color here, I'm going to paste it like that. So we're going to move on to our second color. Now this time our color is going to have some transparency. So I'm just going to drag the slider down a little bit so that we can have these values within the brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste my values between the brackets and that's the effect that we're getting now. Next, we need to make sure that this gradient direction is set to linear and then we're going to change our direction to 224. Next, we're going to make sure our start position is set to 42%. And our end position needs to be set at 76. Okay, so that's looking really good. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some uh, a custom margin. Now, the reason why we're adding this margin is because we want this triangle to be behind the text. So let's go ahead and go and do that. So now I'm on the design tab, click on spacing. So we're going to come over here to our margin. So we're going to add 10%. Right, so for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. Right, so we're going to come over here to our second column and add an image module. So I'm going to search for it first, select it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to upload our image. So I'm going to come over here and click on upload. So this is the first image we're going to add. Click upload an image. Next, we're going to come over here to the design tab and then we're going to click on spacing. So we are going to add minus 20% to the top margin like that. So by doing so, this will allow the image to appear right beneath the primary menu bar without being covered by the primary menu bar. Right, so what we need to do next is to add the second image module. So I'm just going to save this for now, and then I'm going to add my second image module by clicking this plus button. 
I'm going to search for my image module, select it, and then I'm going to click upload. And this is the second image that we're going to use. So, I'm, so I've selected it, click upload an image. Right, so we can see right here, it's below this main image on the top. So we are going to move it around using our negative margins as well. Right, so let's come over here to our design tab, click on spacing. So we're going to start off by adding our negative margin. So we're going to start off with minus 50% like that and then over here to the right we're going to add 350 pixels and then we're going to come all the way here to the left and add minus 350 pixels like that so you can see here we've actually moved this image and we've got it into the position that we need right so for the next thing uh, we're going to come over here to our border and add some border styles so i'm going to come over here select the first one so we're going to set the border width to 15 so because now we want it nice and big and then we're also going to come over here to our top border color and then I'm going to paste my hexadecimal value here for for the color and one more thing make sure that your top border style is set to solid so next we're going to come over here and add another border to the right so we're going to select the, the right tab like that make sure this is 15 and I'm going to paste my color in here like that now that looks really nice so pretty much this is our, our final design for our desktop. So although the desktop version is more appealing, it's not just functional on a tablet or mobile screen. So this is why we need to add uh, different designs for different screen sizes. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a brand new section. So I'm going to come over here and click this plus button. Click on regular. So as we did before, we're going to start off by adding our background color. So I'm going to close off of this. And then I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on background, and then I'm going to add my background color by pasting my hexadecimal value. Next, we're going to come over here to the design tab, click on spacing. So we need to add a custom padding of 50 to the top and 50 to the bottom. So this just allows us to give our design some breathing space. Okay. Next, we're going to come over here to the advanced tab, click on visibility. So this is where we need to also make sure that uh, we select the right option. So we don't want this new section that we're creating to be visible on the desktop. So we're going to disable the desktop like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and save. And then next we're going to add a single row. So we're going to come over here, click this plus button. Select my column. Next we're going to come over here to our row settings. Click on background. And then we're going to add a background color as we did to the section. So I'm going to paste it in here. Right, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add our background image. So I'm going to come over here to our third tab to add our image. Click this plus button. So the image we're going to use is this one right here. So I'm going to select it. Upload an image. And then we're going to come over here to our background image size and make sure that we select actual. For our background image position, we're going to set this to center left. And then making sure that the background is not, is not repeating. And then over here, the background blend needs to be set to overlay. Right, so you can see here, the moment I've added this overlay, the, uh, the image here has become lighter. Now this is just going to make it easier for our text that we're going to add on top of this to be easily uh, readable so you can see here if I go back to normal it's uh, it's really bright but overlay seems to work fine for this okay so for now let's go ahead and save now we need to come over here to the row settings click on uh, this uh, gear icon design so we also need to make this row full width so we're gonna come over here to sizing make this row full width yes so over here on the spacing, we need to add our padding. So I'm going to click on spacing. So let's start off with the padding top. So we're going to make sure that our padding top is set to zero. Now, the reason why we're doing this is because it's going to look weird without uh, with gaps on the top and also on the bottom. So we're going to come over here to the right and zero. 120 to the bottom. And zero to the left. So for now, we're going to go ahead and save. So what we're missing here is the text module. So to make things easier for us, we're just going to clone these and just drag them into position. So to make things easier for me, as you can see, 
this page is way too big, so cloning and dragging things all the way down here is just going to be a bit weird. So what I want to do is I'm going to come over here to my wireframe view so I can see clearly where my text modules are. So I'm just going to clone the first one here, drag it into position like that. I'm going to clone the second one, drag it into position just below this one like that. And then I'm going to go back to my desktop view. So you can see here that was quick. I, can, I just added these just by using the wireframe view. Okay, so now that we have these in place, what we need to do is to set our sizes. So I'm going to come into the first one here, which is uh, click on the text module settings. Click on design, text. So right now, this is set to 73. So I'm going to, I'm just going to reduce the size to about 70. And for the phone, we're going to set this to about 60. And I'm just going to do the tablet again. Let's set this to about 70, like that. So that's, that's looking better. Excellent. Okay. So for now, I'm going to save. And then we're going to come over here to the next one as well and do the same. So I'm going to click on my module settings. Click on design, text. And then I'm going to come over here to this little icon to set my sizes. I'm going to click the tablet, set this to 70, and then the smartphone, set this to 60. Like that. So you can see now, this fits very well in these different uh, um, screen sizes. So if I come over here to tablet view, we can see it's looking really nice, and it's all readable. Right, so let's go ahead and save, and then we're going, we're going to preview all our different views. Right, so I'm going to save my, in fact, I'm going to publish my design because my page was not published. And then we're going to save all this and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so I'm going to save. And then I'm going to exit the Visual Builder. So this is our desktop version. As you can see, nice and beautiful. So for us to see... The, uh, the other versions, we need to enable the Visual Builder and then switch to those screens. So I'm going to come over here and click on Tablet View. So on the bottom here, this is what it looks like. And then on the mobile ver uh, version, that's how it looks like. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new videos. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you soon.